Hello everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here, yeehaw, and Meowskarata is joining the game very, very soon. Here is everything you need to know about this new Pokemon. Meowskarata is the newest speedster coming to the game. Speedsters in general are always high skill ceiling Pokemon. This Pokemon is listed as intermediate, but I think all of these Pokemon really take a lot of skill to shine. Meowskarata has some really cool abilities. Let's get into it. Meowskarata and all of its pre-evolutions have a boosted attack that is on on a timer gauge that is ticking up. You can see it under its health bar. Once that gauge fills, its next attack becomes boosted and you leap towards your target to do extra damage. This is gonna be great for following up on some big fights and chasing down some big KOs. Its passive ability is really cool. It's very similar to things that you would see on Charizard and Blastoise, but a little more complicated. So at 50% health, it's gonna get its bonus, just like those other Pokemon, but it gets a few other things that they don't get right away. It becomes invisible once it hits 50% health. Now, of course, this goes on a timer, so it's not like you can get healed a little bit and keep turning invisible, but you kind of get a nice get-out-of-jail-free card when someone is going to rain a ton of damage on you. Right after that happens, your move speed increases, you deal increased damage, and you start to deal damage that restores your HP. So you're going to kind of use this as a moment to go, oh, it's actually time to fight, not necessarily run away, because I can turn this fight around really, really fast. Very cool passive. Its first two moves are very basic for a Pokemon like this. You have Leafage, which you're going to shoot four orbs and deal damage to your opponents. Also, you're going to reduce their move speed. And then you have Hone Claws, which is a dash move on a kind of a big timer, eight seconds, but it's also going to give you increased attack speed and increased damage on your next three basic attacks. You evolve at levels four and six, and once you become Meowskarata at level six, that's when you unlock your first move choice between either Flower Trick or Night Slash. I think one of the coolest things about this Pokemon is it really does feel like it has two distinct play styles. Let's talk about Flower Trick first, this Pokemon's signature move. Flower Trick is going to have you attach a Flower Bomb to an enemy Pokemon that you get to choose when it detonates. You can also attach it to Wild Pokemon, and it's going to do increased damage based on how low the opposing Pokemon's HP is. There are a couple really cool things about this and a couple weird things about this. First, if you deal damage to an opposing Pokemon that has Flower Trick on them, the explosion radius becomes larger, which is awesome. And it's going to do increased damage. Not only that, if Flower Trick gets the knockout on an opponent, the move's cooldown is immediately reset. Now, here's kind of the weird thing about this move. It doesn't work where if the Pokemon is KO'd, the Flower Trick explodes. There are some moves like this, like Eldegoss's Pollen Puff. It will explode if the wild Pokemon or the enemy Pokemon that it is on gets KO'd. Flower Trick is not like that. You actually have to trigger this for it to work. So you could unfortunately not get the explosion damage if you do not trigger the explosion. Then you have the upgrade to this move, which is really cool because you just get a bigger explosion area of effect and you get to increase move speed after you use it. So you get to hit and run more effectively. I think the big thing to be aware of with this move is you have to trigger it. You have to detonate it. Make sure you are doing that because otherwise you're leaving a ton of damage and area effect damage on the table. Your second option, Night Slash, is really interesting because it's setting up sort of targeted moments where you're going to do massive critical hit damage to your opponents. It actually feels... Ironically, not like Absol's Night Slash, but a lot more like Psycho Cut to me from Absol. But then it's setting Meowskarata up to be this Pokemon that's really heading in there to do a lot of auto attack damage that is brutal, not only to enemy Pokemon, but to objectives as well. When an enemy or even a wild Pokemon is marked with Night Slash, you're going to have a massively increased critical hit rate against this Pokemon with your basic attacks. And also dealing damage to them is going to reduce the cooldown of this move. So it kind of has a cooldown reduction built in similar to Flower Trick, but not exactly the same. You also are going to recover HP with this. So combine this with your passive and you're gonna set up some situations where you can recover a ton of HP very quickly. And like I said, turn the tides of a fight in a big, big way. This kind of feels, I don't know, it feels a little like Absol, but then you're auto attacking, right? So it's like a psycho cut paired with Zashian levels of an auto attack. It's pretty cool. The upgrade is going to increase the critical hit rate and the HP recovery. Now, your next two moves are really interesting. I think both are good in different ways and both do feel like they're set up for a different sort of play style. Right once you hit level seven, boom, you get your second move. So it's really, really fast for this Pokemon. It's six, then seven, and then you're kind of fully kitted out until you hit your Unite 
point move, you either have double team or trailblaze. Double team is weird. It's not exactly like Greninja's double team. And I was a little disappointed in double team. And I think it's because I was hoping that you would use it more for sort of subterfuge and tricking your opponents and setting up situations where they actually think that's Meowskarada. But that's really not exactly what it's used for. The big thing about this move is yes, you dash slightly and your double team dashes out further than you. You can dash yourself in one direction, send your double team in another. But the real point of this move is that when you cast it again before that double team is KO'd by an opponent, you switch places with your double team and there's an explosion that deals a ton of damage. Like, honestly, too much damage. I didn't think this is what the move was going to be about. I really thought it would be about other things. But honestly, it's mainly used for jumping in and dealing tons of damage to your opponents and continuing a chase. Not as much used for sort of tricky plays where they actually think that thing is Meowskarada. They don't really think that. In fact, they might just end up running away from it because they know it's like a bomb running at them. It needs to be pretty close to enemies for it to actually do damage, but when it is, man, the damage this thing does is absolutely insane. I can't wait to see exactly how this is going to come over to the main game because it really could be pretty brutal. On the PTS, the damage was absurd coming off of this clone. The upgrade increases the time your copy is around and also gives the copy sort of more health. It decreases the amount of damage that your copy takes, which is great because if it can get a little closer to your enemies and it explodes, you're able to do more damage. The upgrade to this move increases the time that your copy is up and it also takes reduced damage. So you just have a higher likelihood of getting it near an opponent for it to explode and it will walk towards enemy opponents. It doesn't have a crazy good range, like it's not going to chase them forever, but it does try to walk near an enemy opponent, hopefully so it can blow up and deal damage to them. Your next option, Trailblaze, definitely feels like the upgraded version of Hone Claws, and it does feel like it combos pretty well with the Shadow Claw move that we talked about earlier. This is going to have you leap at opponents, and if you leap from tall grass, you actually go further. The range does feel kind of short. And then when you hit an opposing Pokemon, you are going to get increased attack speed for a short time. So it combos really well with a Shadow Claw setup. Basically, if you can hit a Shadow Claw and then this move or this move, then a Shadow Claw, you've got fast attack speed, huge critical hits, and you just rip something to shreds. This move also has cooldown reduction if you're able to score a KO or an assist. That second part is pretty huge because even if you don't secure the knockout blow, you can use this to combo through a very big fight. I'm really interested to see which move is going to have more of an effect inside the game. Both actually feel pretty strong once you recognize that double team is all about doing insane damage, but this move is also all about doing insane damage. Both of them also setting up moments really for you to just continue dominating the enemy team. The upgrade to this gives you a shield when this move is used, which is interesting because there are a few things about Meowskarada's kit that really makes it feel like, yes, it's a speedster, but it has a little more survivability than you expect. It kind of feels a little like a speedster mixed with some of the regenerative properties that you might see in sort of a brawling all-rounder. Its Unite move is Floral Flourish. Boy, that's going to be hard to say five times fast. Floral Flourish, Floral Flourish, Floral Flourish. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. This is going to have you dash to a target location pretty close to you. It's kind of an instant dash, and then you start having this Whirlwind of Flowers, doing a lot of damage to enemies around you. You can tap the button again, and you can cancel it in case everyone's kind of run away. The most interesting thing about this move to me is that you can be pushed around throughout this. So you can be horn leached away. You could be blocked and moved around. There are actually a lot of hindrance things that can affect this move, which I didn't expect. I kind of expected it to be almost unstoppable while Meowskarada was walking, but that's really not the case. It's going to be interesting seeing how people use this in some fights because at first I thought, well, you're going to jump into a big situation and probably use this right away. But actually, I think people might use this when they already have an advantage in the fight. And then they use this to sort of jump in at some wounded enemies who have already used their displacement moves like Blastoise's Surf and Hydro Pump and stuff like that. Because if used too early, you're going to put yourself in a position where everyone can just 
stop you from getting to them. I think the combinations for this moveset are probably going to be flower trick, double team, and then of course you're going to see a knight slash trailblaze variant as well. It's interesting because both have resets in different ways. Both are pretty powerful and they do have sort of two different play styles, even though in the end, both of them are get near the opponent and do an insane amount of damage very quickly hopefully using that damage to get resets and do more damage to your enemies. It does feel like you can actually play this Pokemon in a way where you combine either of the move sets with either other move. However, Night Slash, given the fact that you get the increased critical hits with it on your basics, you are probably going to want to run Trailblaze just so you can have that increased attack speed. However, it's possible that the massive damage that you get from your clone exploding will be enough. And then the same thing with Flower Trick. It feels like you'd probably play it with Double Team, but there's really nothing wrong with also having Flower Trick and then being able to jump in at your opponents with trailblaze and do a ton of damage with your autos as well as always when it comes to held items there's a lot of speculation of course we have new held items coming to the game very soon one of them which could be really cool for meow scarada but in general you may want to increase your critical hit auto attack damage if you're running the night slash build and then of course things like extra attack Float stones, attack weights, things like that are going to be very, very beneficial for a Pokemon like this. To get a really good idea of what items work well, we're gonna need to see the final attack scaling for this Pokemon. But I think playing this like a lot of speedsters will make a ton of sense. Again, razor claws, attack weights to get extra attack, things like that will be very, very beneficial. And then as far as battle items are concerned, I think you're going to want to run something that gives you the ability to get in and out of fights. It's possible. Shedinja doll will time up pretty well with some of your cooldowns, especially considering the fact that you have some resets. But in general, things like X speed and eject button will work very, very well. You may even want to run an X attack if you're running that auto attack heavy build. For emblems, you're going to be running six brown, six white. Until we get new emblems, that's not really changing. You're going to run something very much like this. There really isn't a reason that you would want to run too many other things. It's possible that you could run a black brown build build and get some success out of it, but with so many resets, you probably don't need to focus on cooldown reduction, and you'd actually just focus more on giving yourself raw attack damage. Let me know what moveset you think you are going to play when Meow Scarada drops. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. I love you, and I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.